In this lesson, we're going to start talking about the course of the First World War itself. Now, we're going to begin in the earliest period of the First World War, as you can probably imagine, talking about the immediate plans that were put into place at the start of the conflict. And the first of these plans, of course, was that of the Schlieffen Plan. We've f focused on the Schlieffen Plan in previous lessons, but we're just going to talk about the actual implementation of the Schlieffen Plan in this lesson. To what extent was it a success? To what extent was it a failure? What actually happened in the series of events going from the uh, beginning of the, uh, of the First World War into the end of 1914, towards the end of the first year of the conflict? So, like I said, we're going to be looking at the First World War in a little bit more detail, and we are talking about what would arguably be concerned to be the most important of the early moves that takes place in the conflict, which is that of the implementation of the Schlieffen Plan itself. So, the Schlieffen Plan is something we've spoken about in previous lessons, and it was essentially the idea that Germany was going to attack France using the state of Belgium, go through Belgium and attack France from that particular border. Now, what was the reason for this particular, uh, particular suggestion? Well, the aim of the Schlieffen Plan was to very, very quickly end the conflict with France in order to focus all of their attention and military forces on conflict with the Russian Empire. The idea was that the Russian Empire would take quite a long time to mobilize forces and to mobilize any kind of fighting uh, military. Uh, and so in that time period, the uh, German military can go through and attack France and reach Paris very, very quickly, uh, negotiate a peace with France straight away, and then focus all of its time and attention on the Russian Empire. Now, this was, of course, in given reticence to the view that Germany didn't want to fight a war on two fronts. No no army necessarily wants to fight a war on two fronts. Germany finds this out twice in the 20th century, that fighting a war on two fronts is a bad idea, because of course it splits resources across the bo uh, both of these fronts, and it therefore weakens the, uh, the the fighting power on both fronts. And so therefore, if you can end the war quickly on one front and then focus all your attention on the other front, that would be considered a, a better solution to the idea of fighting multiple different states uh, that are surrounding you. Now, this is what the idea of the Schlieffen Plan was. But in reality, it was very, very difficult to implement. And it was also very, very risky in its implementation. It would mean that Germany would have to reach Paris in as little as six weeks. So it was trying to really cut through Belgium and cut to Paris as quickly as humanly possible and trying to just end the conflict with France as quickly as possible. Now, there was also the difficulty that uh, Belgium was a neutral state and wanted to maintain its neutrality, and that this neutrality was also guaranteed by Great Britain, such that an ultimatum was put in place whereby if Germany was to attack neutral Belgium, then Great Britain would enter the conflict on the side of France and the Russian Empire, which would of course make things even more complicated and more difficult to, uh, more difficult problems to solve on the Western Front. So despite all of these problems, and despite the fact that it was going to be a risky plan, it was put into action on the 4th of August of 1914. And that is when the German army invaded through Belgium. Now, the first problem was um, in the fact that the Belgian forces actually put up a heroic resistance effort to slow down the German advance. They were not successful in stopping the German advance and pushing the Germans back. As you can probably imagine, Belgium wasn't a particularly strong military force during the First World War, and it isn't even to this day. But it still put up such an effort that would slow the German advance. And you remember that Germany wanted to try and utilize the fact that Russia was going to take a long time in mobilization. And so therefore, they wanted to be as quick as humanly possible in invading through Belgium and reaching France and then reaching Paris. So they, they didn't want to be slowed down by Belgian forces. And so because Belgium was successful in slowing down German forces, um, but on, still unable to stop them, this, of course, caused the first of the issues when we talk about the implementation of the Schlieffen Plan. Now, 
the slowing of the German advance would be useful in giving both France and Britain time to mobilise forces, making the Schlieffen plan even more difficult to implement, because it would mean that they would be fighting a more formidable force on the Western Front, necessarily because of the fact that we have this greater mobilisation that is able to take place. So British mobilisation uh, would be done through the use of the British Expeditionary Force, the BEF. The British Expeditionary Force was led by Sir John French and they would land in France the same month. And so therefore we have um, a quite a lot of uh, mobilisation and we have a, quite a speedy mobilisation taking place on the part of the British forces. They would meet the advancing German at Mons on the 23rd of August of 1914. Now, the thing that was important about the British Expeditionary Force was that despite the fact that they were outnumbered by the German advance, they were still a very well-trained group that had uh, relatively um, apt and relatively uh, high levels of technological advancements with the, with the Enfield rifles. And they were led at Mons by Lieutenant General Douglas Haig. Now, the early success... Um, was um, relatively um, useful on the part of the British forces. They were relatively successful in being able to slow, uh, significantly slow the German advance at Mons. Uh, even though they were completely outnumbered from the very start, the fact that they were a very well-trained group and they had very um, sophisticated technological developments meant that they caught the Germans by surprise, essentially. But just like with Belgium, they were unable to stop the German advance in its tracks, but they did do enough to slow the Germans down again in order to allow France to fully mobilise its forces. Now, in terms of the numbers game, in terms of the amount, uh, uh, the size of the militaries, uh, respectively, the British Expeditionary Force was, like I've said, uh, relatively small in comparison to the German military, but the French military was far larger. And so, therefore, in order to get French mobilisation, this is really what we needed to do. We needed to slow down the German advance as much as possible. Now... France really didn't start the First World War very well. Now, essentially, the French would launch a direct attack on the German forces through Alsace-Lorraine, but this would prove a disaster. They would lose 200,000 men in just 12 days. We'll get to the total death toll for French forces after just two weeks in a second. But essentially, what it would mean was that this first initial attack and push back of the Germans was a failure and they would have to withdraw and regroup to defend Paris. So essentially what this does is brings us up to the month of September. This all happens within one month. <laughs> As you can see, all of these things move at a relatively fast pace. And now we're moving up to the month of September of 1914, really where the major shift in this advance takes place, and this is on the Battle of the Marne, um, which we're going to look at in the next lesson. <laughs>